Hi, this is Joanne Hewins from love to createtypepadcom Today I want to show you a little bit about making a box for the One Stamp at a Time uh, blog hop. This is the box that we're going to be making. And uh, before we get started, I want to talk to you about a few of the materials. We are going to be using the Botanical Prints uh, product medley from page 61 of the uh, January, June 2020 mini catalog. And it is just beautiful. Let me show you what all you get with the product medley. First of all, you get a stamp set, the Botanical Prints stamp set. You get a uh, set of die cuts, and this has some really fancy corners, uh, dies that fit each of these three images, and then you have some leaves also in the die set. I'll just set that aside. You get a roll of this old olive twill ribbon. You get 12 of these beautiful B uh, shapes in a copper color to add to projects. You get two sheets of labels, die cut labels. And then you get two sheets of uh, these labels that are already colored and just stick them on. And then you get four sheets of these laser cuts. There are two patterns, two sheets of this pattern, and you get two sheets of this pattern in there. And they're white on one side and pretty peacock on the other. And then you get 48 sheets of this paper. It's uh, uh, six different de designs. You get eight of each, and they're just beautiful. designs and then the flip side of those designs are black and white pattern love 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 black and white so uh, this is what we'll be using today and let's get started in my post today with the uh, one stamp at a time blog hop for February I had this card that I made our theme this month is birthdays and I stamped around the outside of my card with this stamp from the Botanical Prints. And I used a basic gray for that. And then the paper that goes with that, I've got a piece of it here, uh, looked like this. But I took my uh, crushed curry marker and colored in the little insides of the flowers. And a light old olive blend to color in the leaves. And so that's that's how they look. Here it is colored and not colored. So you can see the change that that made. Um, I used um, these stitched so sweetly dies to cut out this saying, the happy birthday was in peaceful moments. And then I used this die to cut that out of Whisper White. Uh, this was stamped in the basic gray and colored. And then I used the dies to cut that out that comes with the botanical prints and added all that on dimensionals and some of the Whisper White crinkled ribbon. This has become my favorite ribbon. I didn't color it here, but you can color it. Um, I could have used that beautiful old olive ribbon to go with this, but I felt like with the background, maybe that was getting to be too much old olive. And so I used the Whisper White on it. So this is my card. Here's the inside. Um, this is, again, I believe the Peaceful Moment stamp set. And then I just stamped some more of these flowers down here. Um, to go with that, I made a box. And this is what it looks like. It's open on the sides. Uh, and uh, let's get started on how to make that. To make the box itself, I used uh, old olive cardstock. And this is 
four inches by eight and a half inches. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and score that. We're going to score that. I'm be sure and put my cutting blade down toward the bottom and use the scoring blade. On the short side, I'm going to, uh, or actually this is the long side, I'm going to score this, I'm gonna pull my arm out here, at two, four, six, and eight. We're essentially just making a two inch box. And then on the side, the short side here, I'm gonna turn my paper to that and we're gonna score at two. All right, so with that, I'm going to burnish my folds. Now, what I should use here is a bone folder. I see that I have not brought that into the room with me. So we'll just do the best we can. I'm also going to fold this. I do suggest a bone folder. Now I'm going to do a little bit of cutting. So over here on the one half inch side, I'm going to just go up to the fold and then I'm going to cut at a little bit of an angle there and just cut that section out. And then on these others, I'm just going to cut on the line up to that score mark. And in fact, I think I'm gonna go back and just angle these a little bit. And might as well angle it as you go rather than cut a couple of times. I'm gonna angle that one. that one, and then we'll angle the rest of these across here. So what I'm doing is meeting where that fold or score line goes. And then I'll just angle this one as, as well. Okay. So I'll just push those out of the way. This is the makings of my box. I wanted to stamp on part of that uh, so that the sides would look pretty. So I'm going to bring in my old olive and we'll stamp this on the sides. I'm just going to go ahead and stamp all the sides. Of course, it'll end up that two of these are covered. Okay, there we go with that. And that's the same stamp that I used on the card and uh, on the inside of the card and the outside of the card. So now we're ready to glue this together. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on this tab here. And we'll just be able to close that. We'll just hold that for a second or two. Till it's glued well. And then we'll be gluing the rest of these down. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on three of the sides and put those down and then I glue that one a little bit better. Okay, now the bottom of the box is going to be covered, uh, so it's not going to really matter. Uh, so 
that one. I didn't get very good. Let me add a little bit of glue in there. Okay. So we have essentially the basic box is made for us now. And um, we'll start working on the, the sides. Okay. And for that, we are going to need a piece of 2 inch by 11 inch. And we're going to score this one as well. Going to score that at four and a half and six and a half. And what I'm going to do is just quickly, I'm going to turn it around and just do four and a half from each end. Okay. And I will go ahead and fold that again. Better if you have a bone folder. So now I have this band that's going to go around the box, okay? So I'm going to bring in the scalloped tag topper punch and I'm going to punch that from both ends. And then uh, I have cut two pieces of designer paper and they are one and seven eighths by six. And you can see that one of these I have colored and the other one I haven't. And I did that just because one will be the front and one will be the back. And uh, of course you can color them both if you wish. So I'm going to take those and uh, cut the end, one end on each of those. Now, since they're one and seven eighths, they are not going to uh, fit exactly. Excuse me, I got a little bit of a thing on top of that one. And then, but what I'm doing is just kind of centering it inside there so it'll be the same on both sides, or pretty much the same. Okay. So we'll push those aside. So we are ready to glue these on. I'm going to start with the one that's going to go on the back. And so I'm just going to put glue over this. Okay. And it should fit exactly along the top here and you have just a little bit of a olive green border on each side. Now, where the fold goes, I'm going to fold that as I glue it. Otherwise, I might end up with a bubble down here on the fold. So let me just kind of hold that so it will glue nicely for me. Okay, and then we're ready to do the other side. Now I chose to use the, the what would be the back I chose to glue that first because there is some overlap and I just thought I would have more of the colored part overlapping on that. So I've got that kind of centered. Again, where it folds, I want to fold my paper and I just folded it by hand and then we'll work on getting that glued. Well, so now I have a covered piece that will fit around. And then this with the colors will become my front, and this that isn't colored will be my back. Okay, so I'm going to bring in my box, 
and uh, it's not really going to matter a lot uh, where you put that, but it will be folded around like this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on my box. And of course you could use tear and tape as well. It might not be quite as messy. So I'm going to set this right in the middle and then bring up the sides and then I'm just going to hold all of that for a few minutes. You can see it just kind of fits up and around the box. So yeah, tear and tape would have worked immediately. Um, glue is what I had close by, so either one would work with that. So this is the back, this is the front, and I have the sides stamped. Okay, this would be the time that you would go ahead and fill your box. And of course you can fill it later as well. And I, I've got a little bit of the white uh, shred and uh, kisses in my box. Uh, oops. So let's go ahead and finish it. Now I'm going to fold that just a little bit to get that started for when I want to put it together in just a couple minutes. But let's go ahead and, and decorate the front. Now I'm going to lay mine down. Stuff may fall out. The uh, saying that I have used for this, Celebrate Every Moment, actually comes from a different stamp set. It comes from the Honey Bee stamp set. It's right there. And I cut it out again with the Stitch So Sweetly dies. I use the smallest one right here. Uh, and I'm going to add that to my card with dimensionals. Okay, and I don't have uh, too many of the little ones. I'm going to use this small piece here to put this on. Here's an... There's another small piece there if I can get that off. I've ended up getting a little bit of glue on my hands so that makes crafting the rest of the card a little bit tricky. So I'm just going to stick the Celebrate Every Moment on the front of my card and then I have three leaves or three sets of leaves that came from the botanical Brent botanical prints I'm sorry um, dies and I'm just going to glue these on my saying and oh gosh way too much Okay, this one I'm going to put right in here. And then I do have different glues. I just pick this one up and of course, you know, you can't just let it go. You have to use it all. Uh, this one I'm going to stick down in there coming off. And that will dry clear or I can take a little eraser a little bit later and get some of that sticky off. Okay, and then this one is going to go down in here. Sorry about that, they're moving a little bit on me. So that's the front. And then we're going to take a length of 
the crinkled white ribbon and that is going to feed through the tops here, the hole in the tops. And I just pulled it up to maybe about like that. And cut it off. And then I'll tell you, I usually use a bow maker when I'm making bows. So tying one uh, right now might prove difficult. I'll do my best. I can just get it started here. And I really want to, to tie it toward the pretty side. So I've kind of pulled it aside so that it would go there. Sorry, no, I'm off camera. I just needed to have a chest or something to pull that to for a minute. So of course you can just play with that and get it to look maybe a little bit better and I'll probably trim those ends just a little. On there, but there you get the idea of how I don't think I'll trim that because I'll probably untie that and, and play with it again. So here are the two treat holders that I've made. And this is the card that they would go with. So I hope that you'll like those and that you'll try uh, try that. You could put just about anything you want inside this box. Um, I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and if you need supplies, I would love to help you with that. You can go to lovetocreate.tightpad.com, or on this video, I'll have a link to my blog or a link to my online store. If I can help you in any way, please, please contact me and let me know. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.